I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, delighted to introduce you to Vincent Gagliano. He is the author of The Art of War Simplified. He is a seasoned banker with an impressive background in mathematics and statistics, and he brings a fresh and accessible perspective to one of the oldest and most influential texts on tactics and strategy. In his book, he demystifies Sun Tzu's timeless wisdom, translating it into practical insights for modern readers. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Great Writers Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below the interview. Vincent, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me on, Logan. It's a pleasure to be here. Pleasure to have you. There is a lot to learn in the art of war, and it's just not about war. It's basically any pursuit, any goal you hope to achieve, any battle you might engage in, right? Agreed. Uh, life is a battlefield, and it's all about um, all about getting ahead. Exactly. I think Pat Benatar saying that life is a battlefield. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm getting my pop stars wrong. But no, it's very, very true. Life is a battlefield. At work, it's a battlefield. There's only so many promotions. There's only so many opportunities. You have to make sure that you have the right tactics going into it. Some of the tactics that Sun Tzu wrote about were strategy and tactics themselves, sometimes even deception. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you feel are his most important principles that you found from demystifying this text? That's a really great question, Logan. And really, to me, the one that stands out more than anything is use the normal to engage and the extraordinary um, to win. And that's really a precept that I've sought to use like throughout my entire career. Um, this idea that essentially the whole is greater than the sum of that parts, but you need to find that one thing that you do really well and really phenomenally and use that to really distance yourself and put it over the top. I used it, you know, when I was applying to Cornell, I, you know, the book is a republication, um, for instance. So when I applied, I used my essays to really distance myself in a profile that was kind of so-so um, at that. And, you know, it worked out and I got in obviously. And then even when I was at M&T Bank, using some very like plain uh, tools and using them to like a very high level or their fullest extent helped me get a lot of really crucial stuff, really crucial things in. So it's not just that, it's just, figuring out what you do better than anyone else and using that to its full extent. What inspired you to basically simplify and decode the art of war? Again, really great question. So um, I have to kind of uh, explain first, uh, again, the book is a republication. So um, I matriculated into the University of Florida right after you know the second national championship in basketball in 2007. Very interested in sports at the time. And actually started wanting to write for a paper, do sports for the paper. And the uh, paper had said, no, that's for journalism students, which, you know, as well as anyone. And then also had an interest in business at that time. Um, did some sports blogging and people said I was really good at it. And eventually, like near the end of my time in college, everything just kind of uh, coalesced into the book there. And, you know, to kind of paraphrase Dr. Ferdinand Porsche, I couldn't find a book that was quite like mine. So I wound up writing it. Well, I think it's an important book to basically rewrite and to uh, demystify, like I said, because it contains a lot of great information, but the original text is not easy to read, nor is it, you know, um, a compelling read. There's lots of great information in there, but you've broken it down to a point where it's much more accessible, much more usable for readers. Um Tell us a little bit about the example that you cite with the 2002 Buccaneers. Yeah, so um, for, I, I forgot I was going to like move into that. And uh, yeah, I'm sure the local media is going to have a field day with that at that point. But essentially, it was this idea that, um, you know, Tony Dungy was a really phenomenal coach and mm -hmm. still has obviously made the Hall of Fame. But it was when they traded for John Rudin and he had that knowledge with, um, you know, with the Oakland Raiders in the Super Bowl and having that knowledge there that really helped them out there and really bringing a different personality, different energy there that really helped kind of bring the team over the top. And that was on top of having a very phenomenal defense, multiple Hall of Famers, um, I believe like four defensive Hall of Famers in a single uh, playing on the team at the same time, uh, John Lynch, Ronnie Barber, Warren Sapp and Nair Brooks. So 
Um, definitely did not expect that I was going to wind up here of all places with that of all examples, but um, very, uh, very timely example as to how sometimes a slight change, especially up top, can make all the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thought one of the uh, interesting aspects of the art of war was winning without actually engaging in warfare. Tell us right. a little bit about that. What I would say is ultimately it's one of those things where you don't want to have like a lot of attrition. Um, sometimes when you like engage in things, um, you know, you can really make the other person lose, but you lose as well. So the idea ironically is that by trying to, you know, come to peaceable outcomes and really trying to avoid, you know, a lose-lose situation, that's really important for individuals. And honestly, I really feel like the material, especially now, is very timely with, you know, all the current real world geopolitical tensions and the subject matter that's there. I, in a way, I kind of hope it brings about, you know, a lot of like peace or a lack of conflict, ironically enough, but just um, avoiding avoiding losses as much as possible, both yours and, and the other person is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's basically peace through strain. If Absolutely. Uh, you never have to fire a shot if people think you're strong. And particularly mm -hmm. in uh, the workplace, if you're applying these principles, you don't want to mix it up too much with your colleagues. You know what I mean? So you want to be able to win decisively without, quote unquote, engaging into war. Tell us a little bit about how you've applied the principles of the art of war in your professional life, particularly in challenging projects. Absolutely, Logan. So um, again, as discussed at uh, MNT Bank at the time, um, the organization was at the onset of a technology transformation there. So didn't always have, you know, the most sophisticated up to date stuff, but really taking full advantage of what I knew and what I had access to and really learning that and using that was uh, very important for me to help, you know, deliver a lot of deliverables and a lot of very timely things like right at that point that was there. And also, while uh, without getting too specific, when I went over and I helped the bank with the model coverage exercise that I talk about in the biography. Um, at the end of it, I found that I had access to like an existing software that was there from a previous project. And then sort of like going back to that, looking at it, leaving no stone unturned and um, really learning how to use that tool. And uh, I was able to find a feature in that and a hidden tool then to solve that project right in the nick of time and really help them get a lot of that stuff properly documented. Um, those are really the two that stick out from each of those last two jobs. Wonderful. Let's turn to your education a little bit. You attended mm -hmm. the University of Florida and mm -hmm. also you got your MBA at Cornell. In your book, you talk a lot about the University of Florida, not as much about your MBA. Tell us a little bit about the impact that uh, those degrees and that scholarship had on your work with the book. Absolutely. So definitely um, University of Florida, thinking about it, it was kind of a time where all that, all those interests coalesced, but especially like Cornell, the one that really stands out to me is um, there's a professor that's still there, uh, Risa Mish, mm -hmm. and teaches a class there called uh, Critical and Strategic Thinking. And the one lesson that really stood out to me from her over there was um, there's the immediate problem and the bigger picture problem. And you always want to try and focus on the bigger picture problem. So to me, making the decision to, you know, not focus on things that are like really urgent, but focus on the things that are really important has been a lesson that's really stuck out and, and was really resonated with me, especially past six to 12 months or so. And um, I would not be standing here talking to you today without that class and without my time at Cornell. And honestly, my classmates have been, uh, they've been some of my biggest cheerleaders through a very challenging period in my personal life. And, mm -hmm. You know, of course, the tie as well as proof of that. But um, yeah, very grateful. And really, both of those experiences and both of those schools helped me get to where I am today. That's wonderful. Now, your background is in finance. You've got a math mm -hmm. background as well. Um, what made this a good fit writing this book for you, considering that's your background? Sure. So first off is to me, um, even and I will admit, I'm not like my background is not in Chinese, but I actually think that's an immense asset there because I'm not trying to like talk down to people. I'm trying to, you know, view them like a Sherpa or like somebody that kind of walks alongside them, but also especially with the financial background, I felt it was really important to have that credibility from a professional setting of, you know, I, I practice what I preached and 
um, at the end of the day, that's to me, that credibility was really key to selling the message and selling myself. So it's not the academic credibility, it's the professional credibility that was very important to me and really makes it the best fit for me to write this. Sounds great. Tell us a little bit about uh, Vincent Gagliano 2024. What are you up to right now? Sure. So I'm currently uh, selling Medicare and Affordable Care Act or Obamacare insurance over in the Carroll Woods suburb, suburb of Tampa. Mm -hmm. um, very great people um, having a lot of fun there and, you know, helping a lot of people's lives and also definitely trying to, you know, be kind of like a guide or like really try to help people and not just like sell them something that's going to benefit my pockets, but um, really try to like guide them and, and be of assistance to people and, you know, not just view these as policies, view these as people with legitimate medical needs and the like. And um, that's what I'm currently um, doing as well as, you know, obviously the promotional stuff with this book that's ramping up as well. Wonderful. Well, you're doing great work. The Affordable Care Thank Act you. has helped a lot of people. It's a great way for folks to access Medicare, Medicaid, or other health insurance policies, mm -hmm. that's for sure. And this Thanks. book is a great tool. Uh, like I said, you don't have to wage war to be interested in it because the strategies that Sun Tzu uh, spoke about and wrote about, you know, centuries and centuries ago are very, very much alive and well today. The name of the book is The Art of War Simplified. It's written by Vincent Gagliano. He's a seasoned banker with an impressive background in mathematics and statistics, and he has brought a fresh and accessible perspective to one of the most old, one of the oldest and most influential texts on tactics and strategies. This is a must read. It is uh, how to get ahead in business. That's for sure. Vincent, I'm going to leave you with the last word today. I'm listening. I'm going to just say anything else you want the folks at home to know. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So um, buy the book. And I really hope um, that ultimately it benefits you and uh, helps you get ahead in life. And uh, just want to make sure that, you know, I help people, whether it's selling the policies or, or at the end of the day, just helping out people. Uh, that's my what really makes me passionate, what puts the fire in my belly. And um, definitely hope it helps you. Absolutely. And I agree. I think it will for sure. Vincent, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thanks for having me on, Logan. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.